Thank you, and we will call to order uh, this regular meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals for the Town of Scarborough on October the, tw the 11th, to 2023. The meeting will now come to order. This is a public proceeding, and unless the board specifically votes to go into executive session, the public has a right to clear everything that is being said and to view all of the exhibits that are presented. Please notify the chairperson, me, if you are unable to hear or see the proceedings. The board works from a prepared agenda and will take up tonight's items in the following order. Not first, the Pledge of Allegiance, the roll call, approval of minutes, approval of last week's or last month's decision, and then finally today's appeal. Now if I could ask everyone to stand and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In terms of tonight's agenda, there is a tabled item from the prior meeting regarding uh, um, uh, our uh, uh, remote participation policy. However, we've we tabled that um, with the request that the town um, uh, decide whether to provide guidance for um, committees in general. That guidance has not yet been forthcoming, so we'll table that again tonight without objection and uh, and, and, and add that again as, a, as an item for the next agenda. So without objection, I'd like to move forward on that basis. Thank you. Um, the, uh, uh, if, uh, Doreen, could you call the roll? Peter Freilinger? Here. Christine Snow? Here. David Bort? Here. Michelle Stevenson? Here. Kyle Noonan? Here. Terrific. We have two absences, and on that basis, um, Kyle, you will be elevated to a voting member for this evening. Noted. Got it. Um, the next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes. Do we have any comments on the minutes from last meeting? I was not here, but I can vote on them if you need that for approval. I don't think. Don't yeah, four will four will cover, so we we don't need it. I That's will okay. abstain from the amendments. Okay, fair enough, Shelley. Um, any other comments or issues? I had none. No comments. If that could I entertain a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Thank you, David. Do we have a second? A second. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, any further comment? If no comment, could I ask for a vote to approve the minutes? All in favor say aye. 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 The vote is unanimous. Uh, we uh, approve the minutes. Um, the next item is the approval of the draft written decision heard at the August 9th meeting. Appeal number 2753, we're a limited reduction of yard size, size residential appeal um, by Mike Richmond on behalf of the, the Schott family at 36 East Grand Ave. Have we had a chance to review the final typed up findings of facts and finding for the, uh, for the appeal um, from last month. Are there any issues with how those were presented by staff and by, by that? I didn't see anything that was off base for what we had approved. So um, if I could ask for a motion to approve. So moved. Thank you, David. A second? Second. Christine gets the, the punch to the second. Um, <laughs> if there are no further things, could I have a call or roll to approve this, please? Peter Freilinger? Approve. David Borg? Yes. Michelle Stevenson? Yes. But I can also abstain. No, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Just yes. finding those facts. Yes. Out. Christine Snow? Aye. And Kyle Lennon? Aye. That passes unanimously. Thank you very much. The only um, appeal item on the agenda tonight is appeal number 2754, the special exception appeal for home occupation by Danielle Delacquia? Delacquilla, sorry about that. Um, and Timothy Myers at 104 Fog Road. I believe the written agenda had Foss Road. We apologize for that one, but it is in fact Fog Road. Um, the, uh, read this as we, we like to do. Um, the burden is upon the applicant to demonstrate compliance with each of the criteria or provisions for the applicable appeal, in this case a special exception appeal. The board will ask questions as necessary to understand the nature of the appeal as fully as possible. When all testimony has been heard, the chairman will close the record and the board will adopt findings of fact on the criterion and vote to determine if the applicant has met the burden of proof necessary to meet that criterion. It's important to note that if the appeal or special exception criteria have not been met, the board must deny the appeal or application. At this point, I'd also say you'll probably be repeating things that you've already put in print several times. We appreciate you doing that. This is a process of 
reading into the record the, fact for, uh, the facts of the, of the matter for, for this case. So with that, let me give you um, the, uh, the, the podium. If you could speak at the podium, then make sure that you read into the microphone, and thank you very much. Good evening. Thank you. My name is Danielle Delaquiller. live at 104 Fog Road, and I'm here to ask for a special exception to run my home business. And should I go into detail, or do you want yes, to be the one to ask questions? And okay. we'll, we'll ask questions, um, as most likely we'll ask questions after you give sort of a general overview. Great. And then we'll go through the um, specific uh, um, items that are required for the special exception to appeal and ask questions on, on an individual basis. But I'll give that to the, the general overview to you right now. Perfect. So I'm a functional medicine nutritionist, and um, I'm trying to build my business here in Scarborough. Um, I've been doing it remotely for six or seven years now, and um, I've been trying to, you know, expand locally a lot of my business. Most of my business, I would say, 95% of it has been online. Um, and so recently I've had some, some interest locally and I wanted to explore those options. Um, I would say there are some months I could see no people in my home and there are some months I could see probably eight people in my home. Um, and so I have a little home office. Um, you know, I'm seeing one person at a time. It's like a friend coming over to visit. It's, you know, it shouldn't involve any increased traffic. We have a turnaround in our driveway. Um, it doesn't disrupt the neighborhood nor neighbors. Um, in fact, I see people coming and going at a neighbor's house a lot more than I see my clients coming. Like I said, there's some months um, I'm really only seeing zero to one clients a month. So, um, but here I am trying to obey the rules. Okay. <laughs> Terrific. Do we have any general questions from the board to start off? Yes, David. Okay. Uh, do your clients make appointments with you in advance? Yes. Okay. So um, you can control the flow. So oh, it's absolutely. Time. Oh, yeah. And so we're talking about a very limited number of clients. Very this. limited. It's good bro, but 95% yeah. of your business is online. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, I understand that um, you also have a camper that you uh, rent out. Is that true? That was last, we have a camper that we rent out with Outdoorsy.com. We had it on um, Airbnb in which we rented, I think, once last year in our driveway. We didn't do it at all this summer. Um, so it's really been about a year and three months since we um, rented it out in our driveway. Um, and I recently took it off Airbnb because Brian said something about it. I was like, oh yeah, I didn't even remember that we had that as an option. Mostly the, the van gets rented out via Outdoorsy.com in which people, you know, take an Uber from the airport, come pick up our van, and they take it on the road. They take it up to uh, places like Acadia National Park. Um, okay, so when people rent it now, they, they're it's not staying there physically. It's not staying moving there off physically. site. Correct. And that's the way it will always be going yes. forward? Yep. Okay. A uh, uh, question about your sign. I understand you, are, yeah. you do have an existing sign there. I do. Um, uh, are you willing to uh, change that sign in order to comply with um, the town of Scarborough's uh, zoning requirements for home businesses? Yeah, I mean, um, whatever the sign stipulations are, I mean, I spent money designing it. and Because um, I, I did reach out to Brian initially and ask him, asked him about a sign. And he said, as long as the sign is not up all the time, you don't need approval. And so I had the sign made um, and I was taking it down from time to time, but a neighbor ended up complaining and um, that's why I'm here. All right, so what you're seeing, what, what you're uh, doing to the, tonight mm -hmm. is that you're applying for a special exemption yep. uh, home business occupation, Correct. in which case the sign would be permanent. Um, and it would it would require a different sign, most likely. And again, Brian would tell you exactly what the parameters of that are. Mm -hmm. And you're willing to comply with that? Yeah. Size-wise, is that what you're referring to? I'm just unclear on um, what would be the there stipulations. Are, there are a number of parameters. There's size, it's location versus the street and versus property lines. Understood. Um, versus egress, et cetera. Um, we don't have in... Um, we, 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 we have a oh, somewhat vague... Um, in keeping with the neighborhood or in keeping with the design of the, of the, of the, of the area, um, aesthetic 
um, guidance, but uh, again, Brian will go through that with you, but it's not a, a one-dimensional, it's a 12 by four sign and that's it sort of thing. It's, there's, there's a number of criteria that Brian okay. can walk you through. Okay. That's yes. all I had. I would be, yes. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> John. I don't know um, how applicable this is because I, I feel like the camper van and the business mm -hmm. are maybe two separate things, but mm -hmm. is this van parked in your driveway at all times? Yeah, I mean, it's our van. We we take it out and go on weekend adventures, and yeah, it's And it's our does that van. impede any, where, like, is this the map right here that yeah. we're looking at? Where does it does it affect any clients turning around safely in no. the driveway? It, it, do, it does not. To. It does not. No, okay. we have a huge driveway. <laughs> Too huge when it comes to snow removal. <laughs> that was all I had. Okay. Gotcha, Christine. No. Gotcha. Um, cool. Um, I have no questions of the applicant at this point. I think it's it's fairly straightforward um, from my perspective. We have had a number of public comments um, have come across on email. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Doreen, have we had anything on f by phone that we should note for the record? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. And um, I don't see uh, the the the. the the public comments from email ha um, will be, or have been, or will be entered into the, the, the public record. Um, I don't see anyone from the public in, uh, un unless I, <laughs> that's what I, 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 I had understood to be the case. So, um, so uh, with that, I will close the public comment portion of the, the, the appeal. Um, and we'll now go through and consider the findings of fact for the uh, do you need to read those for oh she needs to go through those that's right that she we have to repeat those over and over yes so if you could um uh miss deliquilla uh starting with the standards for special exceptions you did fill these out mm -hmm. um we'll go through these one by one we'll just um and uh and and, and again if we have questions the board we can feel free to ask them individually now and then we'll discuss them afterwards um First, the proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reasons of sewage, disposal, emissions to the air or water, or other aspects of design or operation. No. I, I, as I mentioned, I, I see about one to, I mean, I don't even think it's ever been eight clients in my home per month. Uh, the proposed tr use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. No, there's a, um, again, I see only a few clients in my home per month, and there's a turnaround in the driveway that will not cause any increase in traffic in the neighborhood. And just to clarify that one, because the map, my map was a little cut off, I don't know. When you say there's a turnaround, so people coming in will not have to back out on the fog road. Correct. They can, okay, got it. Yeah. Thank you. C, the proposed use will not create public safety problems which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree in municipal fire, fire or pr police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. No. The proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on water supplies. No. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development? No. Nope. If located in a shoreland zone, and Doreen, we can state that this is not located in a shoreland zone. Gotcha. Um, normally, our code enforcement officer here would speak to the facts and circumstances on this one. I'll ask you, though, to, to, to state um, that the proposed use will comply with all the requirements of the shoreland zoning ordinance if it is, in fact, in a shoreland zone. Yes, it would, and it's not in a, it's not, gotcha. yeah. Sorry. Brian, let me know that. Okay. Um, you have the, the applicant has a su sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. Yes. Myself and my husband, Tim, are on the de deed, yep. The applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection 5 of this section. 
And just may I ask, you're, you, you mentioned you're a licensed nutritionist, mm -hmm. so there is a main licensing procedure and you are up to date in that? I sure am. Yeah. Okay, thank you. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to generation of noise and hours of operation. Yes, I would only be seeing clients between the hours of 9.30 and 4.30. Okay. Any other questions That's at this time for the applicant? Mm -hmm. Just, uh, just one comment here, and I, I don't really see this as a critical one, but um, a lot of the answers here were no or yes. Uh, it, what, really, we're looking more for something that can say why. Okay. Yeah, okay, so just by saying no, you yeah, guys yeah. say, well, why no? Uh, on a few of them, you did say that. Um, I don't see a particular issue here with any of these to answer that way, but... Uh, you know, that's, I just want to comment that that's normally m not what we're looking for in terms of the, the answers on one of these applications. We want to know why. Sure. A lot more. Yeah. And, and I'd agree with that. And Doreen, maybe that's just something we'd um, encourage you and, and, uh, and Brian to push on that one when you, when, you, when you see them like this. I agree with David. In this particular instance, it's not necessarily a, an impediment to the appeal, but um, in other cases it could be. So. Okay, with, with that, I will close the public hearing and the hearing um, part of this, and we will go into our session. Yes? Before you do that, Mr. Chair, we need to go through the, uh, the, the special exception. Oh, really? We have a, uh, I thought we didn't did that. Oh, it's the last page. Home occupation special exception criteria. It's the very last page of the application. Oh. Oh, I didn't see that. I'm sorry. Gotcha. This is rather detailed, but we will go through those. Yes, I'm sorry about that. Um, I missed that. Um, okay, the occupation or profession shall be carried on wholly within the principal building or within a building accessory thereto. Yes, in the principal building, I meet with folks in my dining room. Great. The home occupation shall be clearly incidental and secondary to the use of the dwelling unit for residential purposes. Yes, I only see zero to eight clients per month in my home. Other appointments are Zoom slash remote phone appointments. No more than one person who is not a resident of the dwelling unit shall be employed in my home occupation. Yes, it's only me. Timothy has a different occupation. Exterior signage shall be permitted in accordance with the home occupation time. We discussed this, but you're prepared to meet the requirements of the sign regulations. Yes, I am. There shall be no exterior display, no exterior storage of materials, and no other exterior indication of a home occupation or variation from the residential character of the principal building except as expressly permitted by the district regulations. Yes, nothing but a sign to be approved. No nuisance shall be generated, including but not necessarily limited to offensive noise, vibration, smoke, dust, odors, heat, or glare. Yes, none of these will be generated. The traffic generated by such home occupation shall not increase the volume of traffic so as to create a traffic hazard or disturb the residential character of the immediate neighborhood. Yes, since I only see zero to eight clients per month at my home, it will not disturb traffic. I also have a turnaround driveway for folks to use. In addition to the off-street parking provided to meet the normal requirements of the dwelling, adequate off-street parking shall be provided for the vehicles of each employee and if the vehicles of the maximum number of users or customers the home occupation may attract during peak operating hours. Yeah, since I only see one person at a time, we have an enormous driveway that could probably fit 20 cars, so it won't be a problem. Got it. The home occupation may utilize no more than 20% of the dwelling unit floor area, provided that for the purposes of calculation, unfinished basements and attic spaces are not included. I see folks in the dining room. Uh, it's approximately 100 square feet, and our home is about 2,000 square feet. Great. Uh, home occupations may include retail sales, but it does not appeal that this is a retail sales business. Can you confirm? No. Gotcha. And that would be that, I think. Yes. Thank you to my fellow board members for keeping me honest, but I think we are ready to close this. Gotcha. Thank you very much. If you would stay there in case we have any questions sure. as we go through this. Yeah. Um, that closes the public hearing portion of the appeal. We will now enter into session to discuss our findings of fact and ultimate decision on the appeal. Um, do we want to just start with number one on the findings of fact and go from there? Go for it, Dave. 
Okay. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, uh, the applicant will only be seeing uh, clients by appointment, mm -hmm. and uh, the maximum number would be eight per month, as she stated. So uh, it really doesn't uh, have any impact whatsoever uh, ab over and above any other similar use in the uh, neighborhood. So uh, there's this criterion has been met. Any discussion further? Nope. Uh, Jill, you want to take the B? Sure. Uh, the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian conditions um, when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Um, you know, one to eight cars or um, people by foot really is not going to increase, even if you had eight cars in there all at once, um, unsafe vehicular traffic conditions. Um, what's up, Dave? Uh, Mr. Chair, point of order, I accidentally answered C instead of A. I did that. Yeah. <laughs> so it was applicable, actually. <laughs> God, really? Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Got. Um, Do you want to backtrack public, to that? It, it, public it, safety. It, public so safety. That was public safety. Got it. Yeah, okay. So I, that's that's what I was answering by mistake. Okay. Um, does I'll take A real quickly then, just yeah. as a, a to, to cover that the proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal emissions, etc. One to three, one to eight clients per month is a lot like normal social activity in a home. So I can't see that this would be anything different than a residential, my son has more kids over than that on a given month. So I don't, unless there's a discussion, I don't think there's any issue on that one. We can find that as met. Okay. And then uh, back to B, the driveway. Yeah, so I was almost done. Um, there's a turnaround in the driveway and Fog Road is quite busy, so that would be my main concern if you didn't have a safe way mm -hmm. for yeah. clients to get out. Um, but being able to turn around, get out, uh, there's likely not gonna be any people walking on that road because it is quite dangerous, regardless of Great. what the business is or your, you know, what you're doing. But um, it shouldn't create any unsafe conditions. Yeah. And, and similarly, I, I noted in the public comments, a number of people noted adding traffic to the neighborhood. But again, one to eight people per month um, on Fog Road where there are plenty of families and it's a throughput area between sports facilities on that side of town and all the rest. I, I don't see that to be a valid r objection here. So I'd, I'd agree. And I think we, that's fine. So um, uh, Christine, we're now on to D, D. I think. The proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on water supplies. There will be no impact on the environment or water supplies or any adverse effects by the occasional clients. Yeah, I don't see any discussion on that one. Nope. Uh, Kyle, E? Uh, <clears throat> with respect to criterion E, um, I think the board should find that the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood. With respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures and density, there will be no change to any physical structures, um, minimal visual impacts, and very low intensity of use. Agreed. Um, I also note too that in terms of the neighborhood, the neighborhood is close to a number of large church and social facilities which generate significantly more traffic and quote unquote disruption than anything a one to eight person per month home business would, would prove to, to generate. So I think this is bad. Um, I'll take F, if located in a shoreland zone as depicted. Um, it does not appear that this is on a shoreland zoning map. I, I, I guess, Doreen, maybe if you could ask Brian, just if he's not gonna be here to add a comment that we can skip this one through, but uh, yeah. I think this is fine. So. I think we can make a finding just based on I, I think we can too. Location. And, 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 and if you look at the location where it is on Fog Road, it's on sort of the crest of Fog Road. This is yeah. exceedingly unlikely to be a yeah. shoreland zone. Yes. Uh, David, um, G. Uh, the applicant has sufficient rights, title, and so forth to carry out uh, proposed use. Yes, uh, she is a licensed uh, nutritionist, and uh, 
obviously owns the home, has provided evidence of that. So uh, I think that contrarian has been met also. Great. Rachel? The uh, H, the applicant has technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to the subsection by this section. Um, she did reply yes. Um, there's, you know, um, not too much more to add to this other than she has already said that she would um, comply with anything that, any conditions we put on her. Um, and there's conditions for the sign, and um, she already knows about those. Great. Okay. And then without this further discussion on that one, I don't think we have any. Um, Christine on I. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. She is seeing her occasional clients between the hours of 9.30 and 4, so daylight hours when there's plenty of activity in the neighborhood. And I do not see this use being incompatible with what's happening on a daily basis on Fog Road. Any other further discussion? No. Okay, at this point we will vote on each of the um, matters of fact. I want to kind of go through. Oh. Sorry, I just wanted to add one more comment about the public comments. Sure. Um, I would encourage you to maybe reach out to some of your neighbors. They weren't super thrilled about the sign. Um, and while there's maybe nothing they can do about it if you're complying with all that, um, it might be nice to, I, I don't know what the solution is, yeah. just to let you know. And I think you have the right to see these. Um, but sure. some of them were not... Uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's public record, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and we often mention that we don't have an aesthetic uh, 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 vote here. Um, if you're following the regulations as they exist in our code and the code enforcement officer approves it, that's great. But we also always, as a zoning board, encourage good neighborly practices. Of course. So um, it, 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 it helps <laughs> us. It helps minimize future issues with the code enforcement officer. Yeah. Um, and uh, we all live here. We all just want to yeah. enjoy living here. I mean, so. they're not I the worst comments I've ever seen. Yeah. But yeah. I, can, I, I would can, snag a peek. Maybe. I could probably guess who said something, and I could explain why. It was actually there for a few months, and no one ever said anything. And, you know, we moved to our house, like, a little over two years ago. And the folks that we bought it from had lived there for 41 years, really sweet couple. And, you know, they redid the grass in our yard. And we thought, we always thought our property ended where the grass ended because our neighbor didn't really have grass. And so we were just trying to plant like plants along the border. And apparently I misjudged where our property line was. And he, um, he didn't talk to me about it. I mean, we were always super neighborly. He works for the company down the road that makes lot that, you know, as a lobster distributor, he's given us lobster. His dog comes in our yard all the time, barks at us, poops in our yard. We've had like a good relationship around that. And then we come home one weekend and there's like a line drawn up and and I just said, I'm so sorry that I misjudge where our property line was. And from then, all this stuff happened. So um, I've tried to make amends with them. Tim has tried to reach out like guy to guy because I feel like he was not very nice to me. And, you know, supposedly he was like, yep, life's too short to hold grudges. We moved on. Um, but anyway, up until July 4th, things were fine. <laughs> Well, a fellow New Englander once said, um, good fences make good neighbors. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but in this case, probably a, a reach out as you think about the design sure. of the ultimate sign will, sure. will be a great one to, yeah. to do. So we'd recommend that. Good or bad taste is not a crime. It's, it, it, which is why we, again, we don't have a, we don't have a, 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 a flag in that fight. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, there, there are some signs in town I would, I would suggest deserve consideration. I do, I do have a picture if, if you guys want to see No, it. no, we, it, it okay. really is. We, we, it's just for this for now. Especially for the zoning board. We definitely try to stay away from those Got aesthetic it. things. Got um, that becomes a planning board or a, an ordinance issue. And <laughs> you what? That, that, no fishing for... for <laughs> exactly. Oh, yes. yeah, we, <laughs> but um, on that basis, I'm going to go through quickly on the findings of fact, the votes for the findings of fact, before we move on to just uh, validate the uh, special ex exemption or um, requirements. Um, so uh, 
What I will ask is if there is an objection to make it noted otherwise, I will move forward and accept it as, as read. So for item A, um, can I accept that as approved? Thank, thank you. For item B, can I accept that as approved? Unanimously, yes. For item C, can I accept that as approved? Yes. Yes. Item D, can I accept that as approved? Yes. 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 Item E, can I accept that as approved? Yes. 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 Item F, may I? Uh, item F is not in the shoreline zone. Item G, may I accept that as approved? Yes. Item H, may I accept that as approved? Yes. And item I, may I accept that as approved? Yes. yes. Thank you, team. Okay, uh, we'll go on here and just um, run through quickly the special exception requirements. I'll kick it off and then hand it to Kyle, and we'll go in that direction this time. Um, the occupation shall be carried out wholly within the principal building. Um, uh, yes, the applicant has um, attested that they will meet in their dining room only. So I believe that this has been met. Uh, point of order, Mr. Chair. Uh, in the past, we've uh, <clears throat> normally uh, moved to accept all of these as I would, approved. I would I love to do that, David. Do that. So yes. I make a motion to, <clears throat> to accept all these as approved. David, I will accept that motion. Do I have a second? I, I will second that. Shelley, thank you very much. Any discussion on any of the items individually or in, in whole? No. no. Um, I, uh, all, the, uh, all those in favor of accepting these as read, as read by, the, uh, uh, by the applicant? Do we need a, do we need a roll call? Okay. Do, we, do we need a roll call? We're going to call a roll call when we do the final yeah. appeal. Okay. Yeah. All right. But okay. So that is approved unanimously for the, um, for the uh, special exemption requirements. And then um, I believe with that, we are ready to entertain, if we feel that we're ready, a motion to approve or deny the, the appeal. David. Yes, so moved. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, Christine uh, has a second. Um, with that, do we have any discussion, final discussion on the appeal before final vote? I see no requirement for final discussion. Doreen, would you call the roll? Peter Freilinger? Yes. David Bork? Yes. Michelle Stevenson? Yes. Christine Snow? Aye. And Kyle Newman? Yes. Appeal number 2754 is approved. Uh, good luck with your business. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thanks. In case no one could have guessed, I was looking forward to a short meeting tonight and was trying to move through quickly. So okay. thank you. Hello. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. Um, are there any comments for the zoning board tonight? I think one thing I say we can score a win. The town council um, or the planning board approved. I think the town council will approve um, a, some enhancements to the special use exemption for the RF districts for fishermen and for some other occupational uses. So that should take some of those things that we've been seeing off our plate, which is a good thing. Um, and uh, yeah, otherwise, I think uh, this is a good month. We, we can get through this quickly. Thank you, everyone. Um, may I have a motion to adjourn? Or? Uh, I will motion that in a second. I when I think I'm dropping off at some point, or okay. I mean, I'm, or my term is up. Mm -hmm. uh, would, when do we do those? It's a good question. And, and, and I know my. And I'm not opposed to staying on. I just. And, and actually, on, on that score, we, we, you do numbers. need to go to um, the uh, town clerk section of the uh, town website and indicate that you'd like to stay on. So you have to positively say on the website that I'd like to be reappointed. Okay. okay. She'll reach out to you in advance. Yeah. Okay. And ask if you'd like to stay on. All you have to do is when does that happen? Like first of the year? Or? It, it, technically, all of our terms end either in January and it starts in February or it ends in December and starts in January. Something like that. But, and the reason I say go to the website is traditionally the appointments commission would, unless you told them no, assume that you wanted to be reappointed if you haven't had your, if you, if you haven't termed out yet. This year they've gone back and said, no, we want everyone to positively affirm that they wish to be reappointed. And my guess is Todi might miss some of us as that goes along, just because she's got a lot of people she'd have to contact. So. Just to be on the safe side, if you'd like to be reappointed, reach out to, to Tody via the website. What's and the let term? Know. Two years? It's a three-year term? I think they were all different. 
Oh, three. Oh, where's the term? They were all different. No, but the terms like, are three years. David's is 2024. You Christine, you're I thought it was three two-year terms. Peter's 2024. Yeah. Kyle's 2025. Uh, Joseph's 2023. Silkman is 2025, and I'm 2023. And you could be appointed so for three for three full two a uh, three-year terms. I think mine was a three. Um, and uh, so you could serve three, and then you term out, unless you were appointed for your first term for less than three years because you filled a vacancy. Um, and then you have that partial term, and then you have three terms that you can serve. So did Joe fill a vacancy? Do you know, Doreen? I don't know. Because he's brand new, and he, t he terms yeah. out in 24. Well, his was probably for just one. Yeah. yeah. Because someone for, were for one and someone for three. Partial. And yeah. No. Was, oh. That was all I had. We had someone join and then drop out quickly, I remember, at one point. So... Um, to the point where I don't really, really remember them even attending a session, but um, okay. and I had Joe filled that one. So, okay. but I think I'm up at the end of the year if, I, if memory serves. And so I've 2024 over here. I don't know. Oh, okay. I, I'm, you're right. I'm up on long range planning. I'm okay on this one. So yeah. It's, it's, you're real um, in any event, if you are up this year, would love to have you stick around. Um, just make sure Toady knows on the website. Okay. Thank you. So. Um, and with that, you said you were going to move to adjourn? Yes, I would like to move to adjourn. Thank you. A second, please. I second that motion. Thank you, Kyle. Any objections? No. Meeting's adjourned.